Good morning, and welcome back to the Vitality Project. I'm Dr. Baum. <clears throat> Yesterday, we applied what psychology calls the fundamental attribution error. Well, we, we applied that cognitive error to our conversations about what happens so often in addiction and recovery, where we mix up something that someone has done, for a behavior, we mix that up with something that they are. And notice how I emphasize something. We, we, we turn them into a thing. It's depersonalizing, it's dehumanizing. And this error gets us into a lot of trouble. Um, here's how it goes. The people who love us get scared when we, their loved ones, get stuck uh, in serious addiction. They don't wanna lose us. But rather than expressing the fear, they'll resort to blaming and shaming us. Here's how it goes psychologically, is that fear is the primary emotion, and uh, rather than expressing that, which feels too vulnerable, people will instead move to anger, which is a secondary emotion, and so what we get is they get the shame. <clears throat> you know, if you think about it, there's probably no more powerful way to express your anger and frustration in somebody than by blaming their behaviors, in this case, addictive behaviors, blaming it uh, on something that's broken or defective or hopeless about them. This happens all the time, and uh, all you have to do is ask anybody who's been addicted. So, as I've mentioned before, this distinction uh, that we made when we talk about fundamental attribution error is really crucial. I suggest that we should feel bad about what we've done in active addiction. That's guilt, and it's rightful. <clears throat> this guilt actually may serve to motivate us to change and do the right thing. That's a good thing. And just for you to know, guilt originates in the front part of our brain, and that's the part of us that really does know the difference between right and wrong. Shame, on the other hand, stops us dead in our tracks. It really paralyzes us. It leads to what brain biologists call a freeze response. Think of it this way, it's the deer in the headlights. And uh, if you wanna talk about it in terms of the brain, Shame activates the midbrain, and sadly, tragically, that's the same part of our brain that is most active in uh, the, uh, the origins of our addictive behaviors. So what we're really talking about here is one step forward uh, at best, and at least two steps backwards when, we, when it comes to using shame to motivate. It, you know, it just doesn't work. Come back tomorrow, and let's talk about what does work. If shame doesn't work, what does work? Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you tomorrow.